or even the good stuff. 4 30 p.m. May 8, 2023, 4 30 p.m. Call meeting to order. And I'd like to welcome our new clerk. Would you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about this? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, I was told I didn't have to talk. <laughs> um, I am Stacy Gilmeister and I started last Monday. So May 1st. And um, what else do you want to know? <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> We, uh, we don't have any guests today. Anybody on the Zoom? Uh, just me and Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roll call, please. Here. Zagami. Here. Hardinger. Here. Hubbard is excused. Lopez Serrero. Here. And Lumper. Here. Thank you. Luis, quick question. Is that the, how, how do you say your last name? <laughs> oh, did I say it wrong? It's fine. I get every pronunciation. It's Lope Sorrell. Lope Sorrell. <laughs> it's Portuguese. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't correct anyone. It's not a big deal. Well, well, I mean, now, now that we got, you know, Stacey yes. should get the right uh, <laughs> pronunciation. Maybe you should Lope Sorrell. That'll be on the test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, I'm not going to call it Swanson. <laughs> One last game. We have so all right, item four, public comment. We don't have anybody here, no public comment. Item five, approval of 41023 Public Work Utility Committee meeting. Thank you, Second. Second. All um, question. Yeah. The lady was here last time for returning their $25 and is that taking care of it? Uh, the stormwater, yeah, that was. And what did we do? Just return the money or? Uh... Yeah, we didn't charge the late fee. Um, found, like her, her bank records did show that, you know, the check was written. So it was returned to her in error. Um, essentially what had happened is the they had closed their bank account and that their automatic withdrawal was coming from. So our system, said there was no money there but they had sent the check in so um that was good so we got it straightened out now yeah great thank you all in favor signify by saying aye aye opposed aye. i have it thank you item six the approval of 426 23 public work utility committee meeting move to approve is there a second i'll second question all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And Hardinger the seconded. Okay. The staff report item seven, CIP update, Michael. All right, um, we got a couple of things going on. Um, so we had the special assessment hearing, which the minutes you guys just had. Uh, we had a pre-construction meeting with integrity grading um, at 11 o'clock today. So they're planning on getting started around uh, Memorial Day out there. With the project, with the project completion looking like uh, first week of October, uh, and they'll be going from essentially Ryan Street to uh, Zinzer. Uh, it looks like that'd be done around August, and then from that point east uh, would be done, you know, that by by October. Um, and then Weston Ave from Alderson to Birch, uh, we got the final design. Uh, progressing on that item with construction next year. Uh, Northwestern Avenue, there's a public information meeting. Oh, excuse me, Michael. Okay, Can we go back to uh, Western Avenue? Yeah. I think we should uh, tell the golf course to use Shorey Avenue to cut the traffic yeah. through the construction. And that's going to be the main detour, the sign detour to them is that. I know they actually talked with the golf course um, people this morning before we had our pre construction meeting with them. Right. Um, a lot of the utilities are getting installed on the north side of the existing road where the multi-use path will go. Uh, so their plan is to keep that existing asphalt in place essentially as long as possible and really keep it in place even while they do the utility installations. So um, 
having a paved surface for the majority of the summer to get one way in or out, it, it looks like it will be there uh, because they, they don't want to be maintaining a gravel road themselves. But yeah, I mean, the, the sign detour will be to utilize Shorey Avenue. The thing is, the purpose of that is to cut the traffic count, yeah. cut through the construction area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the OT project, the first thing they do, they just block it and say, okay, that's it. Yeah. And, and I mean, the hard part is, is we've got the businesses on Progress Way, you know, the Tommy Docks and uh, the RGB Hardwoods, I mean, Norcon, Badgerland Overhead Door, I, even like rolling machinery, Sunbelt Rentals, um, you know, those guys, they, they have big equipment that comes in. So, they, you know, we got to make sure we're accommodating them and allowing semis or, you know, dump trucks with trailers, you know, PGA has their equipment right there. And Samuels Group has a yard off of um, service lane there so uh, they will hard close it when needed but also make sure that they are in coordination with those other businesses and letting them know hey today your truck drivers are going to have to come from the west or uh, next week you're going to have to come from the east. okay and uh, we should be getting fairly close to a final design on that west portion too from x to ryan street I'd anticipate probably in June um, have that uh, get a plat finalized and start on the right away um, over on that section too. <coughs> I think where it was Northwestern. Northwestern. Um, so that there's a public information meeting this Wednesday. Um, again, that project's most essentially planned to be a week, one week long, starting May 22nd. They'll pulverize the road that Monday, um, get it regraded, get the binder down. <laughs> by that Wednesday and then have final paving Friday that week. So you have striping in there too? I'm sorry. Yeah, striping would likely be the following week. Just repaving. It's Northwest. just yeah, it's just pulverizing the existing pavement and yeah. then repaving. We're going um, inch wider. a little wider, what I say last time. <laughs> we have 30 feet of pavement right now. We're going to 34 feet. So um, we'll, have, we'll be able to get about a five foot paved shoulder striped in there. So. Is there any um, long-term plans to put a sidewalk there on the, uh, possibly the south side? I would guess just because the parks are on the south side. So there is a, um, a park plan that uh, the YMCA, um, they have Camp Sturdy. Yeah, they got Sturdy. They've got a, you got a lot coming off the south there. Yeah, and they've been working with a couple other was it the Girl Scouts and one of the other property owners over there uh, of kind of like an off pavement, almost like a little river trail. Yeah. So um, that, that is in the works. Uh, the, the, the real pinch point is kind of along that uh, residential neighborhood and then even coming past like the Girl Scouts. Yeah. I mean, the, the grade and some of even the backwaters are right there. Right. So um, yeah, I, we'll be looking at doing something for uh, <clears throat> that's just basically maintenance. Huh? This is, yeah, kind of a last spring, um, I think before you got elected, um, the DOT had a push to get some grant funding out for this year. And Northwestern was like the one project in the village of Weston that met the criteria of being a collector road. And we could just pulverize and repave it without having to worry about curb ramps or something like something else that would have made it. So the, de the design had to get turned around in like a month. Is that kid, like a six eight or a seven or a seven two or what is our level that we usually when, when we say okay we got to do maintenance on it? As far as uh, well, the DOT's got their levels for when road deteriorates to a certain level or to maintain it at a certain level. Like what's usually the tipping point? It's just the potholes go nuts and we go okay we got to fix it or yeah. So we rate all of our roads on a one to ten scale every two years. Um, this year we have to do it again. Generally, you know, anything from a seven and above is, yeah, is, is fine. Yeah. Um, you know, routine maintenance on those. Um, our five to sixes are generally when we get into, you know, overlay or something, you know, there's maybe some structural yeah. issues or some drainage that we need to correct. And we, we do a lot of that in-house. And then once you get below that, um, you know, that's when we start putting it on the capital plan because the the, the overlay, you know, the structure is so far gone that an overlay is only going to last maybe five years. It's not going to actually be a 10 to 15 year solution. So it, 
doesn't make sense. Um, so, so the grant that we got for Northwestern is basically nothing that's coming out of us. Yeah, it's an 80% federal. I mean, so the co we're paying essentially a cost to overlay the road, but we're getting a, a full road out of overlay cost, or maybe even a little wider. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, so that's Northwestern. Um, East Jalnik and Von Kennel, um, RFP for design services went out last week for that. Um, those proposals will be due uh, first week in June, and we'll have, I guess, the goal of being a recommendation to have a design engineer um, get on board in July, at the next, at the June meeting, so they'd get started in July. Um, then next on the plate is getting the Ross Avenue project out, since we do have- Excuse me. Is that Jelnik is right in, right out? No. No, nope. that's you can make a left turn there. You can, huh? As your own. At your own risk. risk yes. Your life is in your hand. <laughs> yeah. It is. I mean, you no, see I the traffic yeah. in there. It's yeah. unreal. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's fine. Um, or that Ross Ave, um, that one, we are getting some. Uh, we have a DOT grant for construction in 2027, and they are encouraging us to get that designed sooner than later. So uh, that's a joint project with Schofield. Uh, that's the Bird Street, that one. We, we just have some punch list. 50 50 there, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah, the north half of the roads in Schofield, the south half is in Weston. You get the grant for that? Or? We got a grant for that. We got like 2.7 million. We got a good, a good number, big number. Yeah. yeah. So then Birch Street, that one, um, we have a couple punch list items yet to be corrected as far as just restoration. And there's some damage to the walking path late in the fall. So uh, that still needs to get corrected. Um, getting here back from the county on this one. And then uh, I was contacted by the town earlier today actually about um, Ross Ave from River Bend to Paul's. Um, that was one that we had applied for some other grant funding for, we didn't get. Um, my understanding was the town didn't have any other funding. So uh, I was asked if we'd be one, if we'd want to look at an overlay on that project. Uh, I know part of it would be to connect water and sewer and also add pedestrian accommodations. But, so I guess that something probably that, to discuss at a future meeting as far as what if, if we'd be okay with putting an overlay on that and letting it be as is still for the next 10 years, or if we want to, uh, you know, maybe invest a little more and have the town contribute a certain amount and we just take on the rest and still apply for grants or. So you think your overlay is gonna last 10 years? That, that's generally about what we get out of an overlay. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's maybe not gonna be perfect after 10 years, 10 years, you know, you're kind of expecting you'll be back to where it was when you, first put it on, if not, hopefully slightly still better. Did you do anything with the walking path? So that, that, that's one of the questions is our, our initial plan was to extend that walking path all the way out to Mock Miller Park. Um, if we overlay the road, you know, there'd be no walking path or maybe we'd look at having a path only project moving forward. But um, so I guess that's a question. I asked that I asked Milt or his name is here, oh, to, uh, you know, we, we need a little more uh, info from them as far as what they'd be wanting to look at or what their vision is for that road since it is, uh, I mean, in some spots it, it's 100% in the town of West, it's still, in other spots it's half and half, so. Yeah. If we do anything on that, we should also, there's a couple of spots on that that could really use some help on drainage. Yeah. Well, cool. yeah, there's, before it before you hit like river bend that area is all solid ice every year <laughs> yeah, so that's a future project there um, you know, utility projects josh might touch on some of these but the pump house is still continuing uh, moving forward we have the um, bid results for the SCADA and the project what's the what's the schedule for the pump house when is that going to be done they're still showing a september early September completion. So um, some of the, they just have some long lead time items on uh, some of the VFDs and the well pumps. So it's really the electrical components that, yeah. yeah. Uh, they look pretty good from the road. I don't know. Yeah. 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 They poured the slab and everything, I think last week or whatever. 
Oh, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it's really just some of the electrical components that like they're going to be waiting on for. I think it's going to be a huge improvement for that that area in that park. There's a lot of people walking up and down there all the time. You've got you know you got the two parks right next to it. One of them bathrooms. Yeah. So it's just going to be nice to have that there. Yeah. I, I think we'll see a lot right. of people use yeah, that. Yeah, that was the right move. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Hey, anything else? No, I can be done talking. Are you sure? <laughs> you sure? It sounds like you got a lot more to go with here. Uh, hey, what are they, what are, one other question. What are they doing? I don't know if it's yours or, or if it's, I don't know, the, the, the kayak launch. Um, it's, it's on. For us, road. yeah. Um, we're going to wait for the water to go down. I don't know. I just, are they going to, are you going to try something different? Because I mean, that, that's an annual. <laughs> Uh, Dan can cover that yeah, one. Yeah. What we've got actually, it's sitting at the old shop. It's basically a steel box. We did the same thing out on Jay. In order to keep it from washing the ends and getting away, we took just plate steel. It's heavy. Our mechanics, they built it last year. We just didn't get around to putting it in. So, what we'll do is we're going to, I had it located last year. There's nothing down there. We're going to pull the block out, excavate it, set that down to the end where it meets the water, replace the block into it to contain it. The kids have been picking the block out last year and we're throwing them in the river. That's why it's missing right now. What we might do for the time being, yeah. I was yeah. trying to figure them out. I was trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> like, they grow? Yeah, no, they're in the river. It should be right downstream, but it's not. <laughs> no, so the thought was for the time being, we'll see once. We're just... We're so far behind the eight ball right now because everything happens. Oh, no, I understand. But what we might do is just put some breaker run in there to hold, you know, so somebody doesn't, because it'll get used yet, put some breaker and we can reclaim that. Then we'll pull the block out, set the box in. It's like eight feet wide. And I think this one's probably 15 feet long. We did it on Jade. They did the same thing because how are you going to hold the end from washing? And I'll be in the ground in a long time before that thing would ever rust away to the point that it would have to be replaced. Yeah. So, perfect. Yeah. It's common. All right, item eight, the street operation update. Um, yeah, we went from winter to crazy. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really busy right now. Um, I don't know where to start. Right now, it's basically this week, we're going to, we were out on Highway X, I was telling Shane earlier, because the county's repaving X from uh, south of Schofield Avenue, the 15th, they're going to close the road, hard close it on the north side of Barbican. They're going to button it right off. They're going to come in and mill it going down to about East Yellow. They're going to take an inch and a half off of it, two inches. Set down and pave it. They're going to do night paving on the south side of the intersection, including the intersection of Barbican. They're going to do it under traffic, which meant that we had to get out there and get the manhole, sanitary manholes needed to be re-ringed, so we had to chop the Concrete out and then the water valves, there's uh, eight or 10 water valves in that stretch. Um, eight of them were bad, so we had to chop the concrete out, replace the water. The guys are out there today, so so they're going to come in and we get that done. So now it's basically, it's brush and leaf pickup this week, but with the bad storms we had this winter, there is a mountain of brush to pick up. A lot of people had windfalls, so we'll be running into next week. Then after that, we're just off and running, and things are popping up like always. You can set a schedule and it'll never stay. So we just kind of roll with the flow. Like I said at one of the previous meetings, um, this winter was brutal on some of the some of the um, seal coated roads. So the goal down the line is we're gonna try and get some use our milling head and get some of that stuff done. I talked to the city of Was about bringing our paver over probably three four days this summer, and we're gonna do some paving Birch Street. Um, south of Schofield Avenue, or actually south from Jelnick going south. There's a couple bad spots in there. We're probably going to have to undercut. There's some places out in the industrial park. Um, so right now, it's just kind of a week by week thing, you know, kind of just keep rolling with the flow. We've got a schedule. We had a meeting last week I did with the guys, and we kind of laid out our, our needs for this year for work that needs to be done. So that's kind of where we're sitting. And the other thing, uh, one thing you got to keep in mind, too, we've got asphalt overlays coming. Um, Executive Estates is one subdivision that's going to get it. Windermere Oaks is going to get it. So we need to do the milling along the curbs there with our milling head. Plus we need to raise the manholes and the water valves. So American was, I met with them last week. They were bugging me about if they could get started yet, but there's just no way we're going to get to that right now with the staff we've got. We'd had some interviews and hopefully we're going to get a couple people, more people on board. So we finally be up to full staff on the street staff. We've been running 
two people down since last October. So in between the move, it's really been a battle. Um, we have one accepted offer and we're in uh, hopefully final negotiations with the second. Are both CDLs or they, they do? One does have a CDL, one does not. So they're experienced in the public work? Uh, one of them, yes, um, they work actually for a neighboring community. I think he told his boss. One, one, so the one that's committed um, currently works for the village of Marathon City. Um, so he'll be moving over here. And the other person, um, they have some experience working in a, uh, a gravel pit, you know, operating end loaders and some of those things. Um, but he, driving a truck in a pit, you don't need a CDL. So he's got some experience, but doesn't actually have the license. Gotcha. So um, that he's one. not going to be foreign to it, though. He's yeah, no, he's not going to be green, right? And then one of the final things when you scroll through the pictures, I just took pictures of everything that goes on at Ryan Street just to show you the different things that it just looks like a pile of brush, but it's a daily ritual this time of year, just pushing brush up. Yeah, All this stuff takes time, you know, and that's just, but I'll have lots of pictures of work being done for the next one because we're all over the place. Norcon is working on Schofield Avenue. They're hauling in on, on this recycle pile, which right now we don't have to push much off, but we're gonna be getting the asphalt off of Weston Avenue. We're gonna have a lot of material to crush coming up to topsoil. I don't know if we're gonna screen any right yet. We've still got some left, but it just, you know, it's a good thing having this recycling area out there because the compost, we sold everything that we took in last year, which was nice. So it brings us an income plus it's nice for the residents to have a place to go with that stuff, you know, the brush and everything. And we bought two more trail cams since they were on sale. So we've got three trail cams sitting out by the brush site. And somebody was stuffing the dumpster with garbage last week, but they weren't smart enough to take their name off of some of the boxes that went in there. So uh, Captain Rusnick with Everest Metro is really user friendly. I just email him the pictures and he gives them to the officers and they go talk to the people. So I was just gonna ask you, how's it how's it going with the illegal? Uh, it's it, the, the brushes, they've been that it cut back quite a bit. So but we added the two trail cams so we can get better pictures out of them. So um the the contractors that were dumping there, we're kind of getting a handle on that. Hopefully, word spreading that that's a no-no. They need to go to Tito and you pay for it to dump there. So it's getting there. So any questions on them? I'll keep sending project updates. I don't know if you guys want them to, like Luis and Roy, I, I've sent a weekly update of what we've got going on, meaning the contractor stuff, like Norcon's work in Schofield Avenue. If you're not a village board member, I could still add you to the list. And every Friday, I just put out a, it's an update because as things progress with GSB 88 getting sprayed and crack sealing and that, it just kind of lets you know where we're at with the contractor stuff. So what's the schedule for Norcon? Um, about three weeks they were estimating. I was out last Friday and marked a bunch more because it all comes down to the money. Uh, we've got about 170 joints they're going to be sawing six foot wide longitudinal 12 foot in width that they're gonna be replacing those joints. There's some curb, there's inlets, and some of the manholes, where the manholes, the joint is getting bad, those are gonna get replaced too. So, so three weeks, you already used one week, and so two weeks left on that project. Uh, don't hold your breath though, because of weather. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and that's their projected, you know, but Norcon's great to work with, uh, no complaints at all. In, out, um, they're real user-friendly. All right. Any questions? Um, yeah, I, I, you want to add me uh, for the yeah. Answer. I'll add. I'll add everybody on it. Then. The public works committee should just be a, a drop down. You can just click on. Okay. Yeah, I'll get you guys on it too. Then. Yeah, I think it's giving you pretty much update what's going on. Well, it's some construction yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be closed and get over whatever. So. All right. Item nine. Tell me, tell us the operation update. Yeah, we had quite a bit of the miscellaneous well maintenance stuff up at the top here uh, last month. Uh, as I mentioned previously, we were um, asked by the EPA if we wanted to participate in a, a P PFAS a technical project. Uh, they actually did reach out and collected a sample from us through well number four, kind of a pre and post treatment, um, just to see if there was a breakthrough in a specific 
PFAS uh, compound. I haven't got the results back yet, so that's still ongoing with the EPA. So um, what else are they expecting from us besides just getting a sample? That, well, that's it for now. If they ask us, we said we'd be there for them. They send us the sample kits. We sample and they take the data. And there's, I think there's a, a dashboard that we can see the results, but they send an email when they're ready. I haven't gotten any information on it yet. So, but it's probably going to be ramping up a little more um, kind of once they start deciding what they're actually looking for now. So it, it should help us in the scoring for the, um, the emerging contaminants funding yeah. for um, our our PFAS projects. So since we already had one in the works for Wells three and four, yeah. it won't hurt to uh, get in the good graces there. So people with the grant funding can put it this way. All right. Uh, a carry note, I guess, well, too, over at carry, um, I'll touch on a little more, but we had quite a bit of monitoring and um, a lot of efforts to try to make sure they weren't running out of water. We had an incident where uh, the pup just is not keeping up. So um, we'll be replacing that in the near term with some future work to be planned down the road. Um, so I'll touch on that down in the miscellaneous stuff. Um, our guys also started and completed the non-flushing valve exercising portion of our system. Uh, we started our actual water main flushing this year, uh, today for this season. So we'll get the rest of our uh, valves exercise that we have to meet for the DNR. Um, we're doing a little bit differently this year since we don't quite have the capacity that we normally have to get to our scour velocities through our big lines. Since we didn't get to flush at all last year, since we were down to the bare bones of our system capacity, um, we're just trying to at least get some of the scour velocities through our six inch that'll pull through the bigger lines just so we can kind of still unidirectionally move the water through the system so we can kind of clean up. I haven't gotten too many calls today about anything yet, so hopefully that stays that way, but it's early. Um, so flushing's ongoing. Uh, Dan touched on a lot of the County X stuff that we had for uh, the upcoming overlay project. Uh, our guys assisted on a service leak over on Alex Street to repair curb stacks. Um, on the sewer side, just some, some normal miscellaneous lift station items kind of on the top. Uh, still gathering our, our pH data, trying to get a better feel for some of our violators. Um, we've had some high pH, well, I guess some outside of the, the range of our pH is that the remote Metro uh, sanitation dist sewerage district wants to see. So we're starting to kind of move some pH probes around to kind of get an idea of maybe where some of the, some of the naughty uh, customers are. Um, Gosh, just curious, what, what would usually spike that? Um, I mean, not to pick on it, but Wasa Tile is basically right at the very end of our system. So Rimon uh, Metro, they have basically two metering stations where part of our system flow is kind of through our Hardee's station that we say, and then we have another one that's kind of by Cedar Creek. Um, and Rimon Metro has all their pH data and they have a metering station right there that can check flow and pH. Um, and when they get these large spikes, I mean, there's really nothing else. It basically has to travel from kind of down by Red's Market. And that goes all the way back through up to, what is that, Sand, what park is that, Sand, Sand Hill Park? Yeah. Kind of down by Alderson. If you take Alderson way down to almost Howland, it kind of comes back over there. So there's no real industry except for up by like Transport Way that would dump in. So by the time we would get pH in the 10s, 11s and higher, I mean, they would all be diluted by then. So we, Wasatile admitted to some issues they found. So we had started to put some pH probes at different spots throughout the system. And um, we've had a couple of different spikes, high and low that weren't Wasatile. So now we, we need to try to get out there and, and make sure people understand what the ordinance says that they have to be within, you know, I think it's six and a half plus or minus. Basically nine and five and a half, they gotta be between. What would be the typical thing that people are dumping or doing to get that? I mean, you know, I don't even know what Wasa Tyler would use, some type of cleaning products. Or even just cement. Yeah, cement. cement. High pH. Yeah. 
if you're, if you're washing, washing out. Yeah, yeah. washing out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, they, they do the a chemical lot. mix and everything. That's it. Yeah. 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 Who else would have something that would just spike pH like that? No one. <laughs> well, and we've we've got some spikes along transport ways, so I don't know if Nova Truck Wash could potentially have something, but we haven't been able to pinpoint exactly. Right. But we know it's there, so we've reached out and notified that hey, we have the ordinance in place. Make sure you're you're following and not just dumping anything. You know, they, yeah. they're supposed to be barreling stuff that's excess in the yeah. tanks and everything else. I'm just so. curious what typically it, it, it is the culprit as far as if it is cleaning materials. Yeah. Or whatever. And we need to get on top. We have some other spots where we'll, we'll see, you know, like gray slurries rolling down if it's paint or, or what have you at some of our stations. So yeah, it's, we could probably use about a hundred of these things throughout the system and samplers and everything else, but it's, yeah. time and money and we're, we're trying to at least follow with our new SCADA system that's coming online at least we'll be able to extract <coughs> more flows and you know get move around with some of our ph data as well appreciate it thank you yeah um i think michael touched on our, our SCADA stuff we got the uh the biz i think we're gonna touch on it later too right i have 11 on the agenda yeah, yeah. so if you get through you nine quick in bed in there right what's that Correct, yeah. We had one bidder on each part of the project. So what was the engineer estimate? Um, I have that in there. That they was pretty much right on um, human budget or just was, under. I think it was higher a little bit. But... <clears throat> yeah, I, I know on the water side, we were looking at 700,000 and change and then sewer side, we're at 250. So we we're somewhere in the, I think we we're about a million dollars between water and sewer. And we came in at 900 and some, but. The specifics of that are on item 11. I know I got the numbers in there for that. I'm surprised who got it, but that's all right. So, you guys gotta watch. <coughs> what's that? You gotta watch that project. Yep. Yeah. Watch, we watch all the projects. I know that one is different. Go ahead. Okay, so I mean, we have, you know, our diggers tickets are starting to, to pick up its pace. I know Frontier's getting in here. I think they're trying to do a whole upgrade, kind of like TBS did a couple of years back. Um, we had work orders our operators took care of, um, touched on our PFAS stuff. Uh, municipal well was in. They did rehab and uh, got number four back up and running. That was on uh, last meeting as well. I touched on our water main flushing started today. Uh, so the carry well, I guess I can touch on a little more. So we it we had started noticing that the tower at carry was kind of fluctuating a little more than normal. And then one morning we woke up to calls saying, you know, Rim Mountain Metro had no water and carry didn't have water, and we saw the tower was empty basically. And um, so when we got it fired back up, uh, it, it was basically determined that we could we could find that the, the pump was failing when the when the tower would start filling up to, you know, maybe 10, 12 feet, it, it just couldn't pump to the capacity that it was dying to be. It should be about 600 to 640. Um, once the tower started filling, it was only able to pump maybe 430 to 450. So that in turn, when Carrie's usage it, it, it seemed that they were moving to a, a decrease their usage, but now that we've been discussing things with them, that's not going to be the case. So um, to meet their demand, and since that pump was basically failing, um, we decided we, we had a contractor, got us some numbers, and we're going to be just, just replacing the pump, um, hopefully in the next week or two. And then with the plan to get a better design for adding a VFD to the system and giving a full rehab to get us back up to the to the design capacity and maybe above, a little above, but um, we have a meeting with Carrie on Wednesday to kind of see what their grand plan is going forward um, to see you know if that well is ultimately going to be able to meet what the demand is that they may have for the future so. I know we have the interconnect with Rothschild that we're actually connected to currently, um, but you know that's not supposed to be there just to supplement their demand. I mean, so it, what's the new pump going to pump? How many gallons per minute? Uh, it's designed well, designed to pump six forty. You know, if we get a little more, it's okay, I guess. But how we actually, well, how deep it is? Off the top of my head, 
the, the pumping levels what, like about 40 yeah, feet 40 feet at the pump so it's about 90 feet probably uh, yeah. so yeah uh, yeah so I, I guess just to piggyback on that so the the issue I guess really is so carries our island system over there from the former remnant town uh, and so when we're on Rothschild water Carrie still pays us their rate which for ease of math is two dollars per thousand gallons um, Rothschild charges us roughly four dollars per thousand gallons so we're, we're paying Rothschild essentially two dollars per thousand gallons and they use six hundred thousand gallons per day so um, we really don't like putting them on Rothschild water because the water utility is running at a deficit then yeah. so uh, we, we tried to hold out as long as we could but the, the pump was only at about 60 some percent of what it was rated at and um, they're having production issues when we're calling them saying hey you need to slow down stop using some water um, you know it's one thing if we're pumping at 600 you know where we normally are and all of a sudden they're having issues and we're going hey you guys that may not be possible but if we're not able to provide them with what they're used to or expecting, you know, I guess we we need to make, you know, we can't just tell them to stop their production either. So and we kind of turn and we kind of determined it's probably the pump failing due to, I mean, when that tower was drained, I mean, we had to, you know, the, the pump had stopped. And once we fired that pump up, I mean it was it was able to pump up over 650, 700 gallons a minute without that head pressure against it. So, but once it quickly got some water, I mean, it just, it just couldn't, couldn't keep up. So with, we talked to municipal well and um, AECOM as well, just to get kind of their input on it, to see what their thoughts were. So, and they, they figured it was just the pump is failing. So if we wanted to get above and beyond the original design capacity, we would have had to go through some DNR approval <laughs> stuff. So, we're putting it back to what it should be um and then you know once we have discussions that you know we have the bag we have the pump back up to where it's designed to, to pump and we can look forward to the future to rehab it and see what other needs we might need to put into that thing so all right anything else I, I think that's it i mean i think everything else was touched upon i guess one thing the meter pit project um, we did bid it previously and advertised we had no bids. We put it back out there after having discussed with a few contractors. So that did advertise in the papers May 4th, and it should be also this week. I don't know what we had for receiving bids um, by the 25th, I think. I think so, yeah. Um, so we have something to report on the next meeting about potentially the meter pit project. Uh, Michael touched on Western Ave project. Uh, and the rest of the stuff is hanging out there. Um, and I just had the customers we've added and kind of our pump data, our wastewater flow data, and lift station hours. So what's the status of that easement for the Cedar Creek? Is that still hanging out there? For the interceptor? Yeah. Yeah, we have received letters. Um, I need to see why others aren't giving us the letters. I have a feeling why. Uh, one of them was kind of not on board with it, so we may have to just, I don't know, force it. Yeah, you could do that, more. but I think you should get the one you, you could before you approach him and try him to, yeah. Yeah. to force him. But uh, because that project is hanging out there at least for two years, I can say. Yeah, I, I was working on it at CWE when I was there. Yeah, there we go. It's more than two years. Jay was working on it. Yeah, Jay was working I think you should start working on it and we'll push the project through. Yes, I, I agree. We we need to address some other things along that whole interceptor sewer anyways, I have a feeling. So maybe some infiltration spots. And it's a lot. It's a long stretch and there's a lot. A lot we need to look at it there too. Yeah, through a swamp. And through a swamp, yeah. So so any question for Josh? No, thank you. Yep. All right. Policy discussion and recommendation. Item 10, authorizing resolution, the special assessment of Western Avenue, Ryan Street to Ponytron J. All right. So um 
about a week and a half ago, we were in this room for the special assessment meeting. Um, we had the two, two audience members attend. Uh, and I was contacted by a third resident later who, again, they own a vacant parcel and just said, am I reading this right? I don't have an initial charge. I said, yes, if you're have a vacant parcel, it's like, okay, cool. Um, and I haven't heard from anybody else about it um, after. So I guess, you know, I kind of summarize what was in the report. Nothing changed from uh, that, uh, the 26th. So unless you have any questions, I guess I look for approval of the resolution. I'll approve the recommendation. Village, uh, Village Board Resolution 2023-010 authorizes Authorizing resolution for special assessments for drive approach, sanitary, sewer main, and laterals, and water main and laterals construction for the West and the Ave, Ryan Street to Kind of Road J construction project. Is there a second? Well, second. Discussion? Discussion? All in favor by signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I have it. Thank you. Data system bid result discussion and recommendation. <clears throat> so uh, it's been about a year here um, going through the, the whole redesign of our um, SCADA system, or I guess supervisory control and data acquisition. Uh, it's kind of the uh, call it the nervous system for our utilities. Um, you know, it, it's what makes our waters talk to our towers that tell the pumps to turn on and off uh, lets us know how you know our lift stations are pumping you know uh, so so really it's it, it's the thing that makes it so we don't have to be monitoring everything all, all day every day uh, and our current system is uh, I guess failing to, to a certain extent um, it no longer really calls out it there's a lot of communication failures. Um, it's caused us to run blind to a certain extent at times while well, we're trying to fix it. So, um, you know, it's in both of our water and sanitary sewer master plans to get that SCADA system updated. Um, even in 2012, it was really kind of, it was more of a lipstick on a pig type of uh, improvement. It made the, you know, we had some radio improvement, radio upgrades, but after 10 years, Essentially, the a lot of that is still now outdated in the technology. You can't can't find um, replacements for but really just revamping and going with a new system, replacing a lot of the old electrical components. Is uh, I guess was the recommendation moving forward. So um, we got the project out for bid. Uh, those are opened in late April. Uh, we had two parts. One is a, running a fiber optic line to connect well seven and eight, this building, and then um, going down Ross Avenue and then Corzala to where wells three, four and the treatment facility are. Um, that hard wire will make it so that data can get processed. And uh, this building can also be a, a hub for um, storage of that data. Um, so we can have a backup. So in the event that uh, something happens at the treatment plant, um, there will still be another um, area, and we are on two separate, my understanding, kind of electric grids. So if there's power out in that part of the village, th this part of the village should still be running. And we have a backup generator um, at both facilities as well. So it's kind of a, a reinforcement of making sure that those facilities can still stay online and communicate with each other. Um, so the fiber optic line is uh, one component. And then the second one is then all the... Um, the replacement of the, um, I guess what I would call it, the, the radios for those other ancillary, some of them were going with cell phone um, communication just because a lot of the lift stations are down in, in holes. So getting them to communicate with a radio, um, it's not going to be there, especially once things leaf out. And um, generally, that's when we have the most problems is in the summer, which is also when we have the most water demand for lawn watering and other items. And then it replaces the PLCs. I forget what PLC actually stands for. Um, logic controller. Yeah. Um, so there's a cell and a fiber unit. So so the fiber, yeah. Well, the so the cell will be under the other component. Um, 
the PJ Corton's component of getting that. Um, the fiber really is just getting the, the fibers are redundancy the backup between the two. Correct. Okay, I got it now. Yeah. Yeah. So then we had the. Um, Oh, I had it right there, program logic controllers. Uh, <laughs> I just look at the screen. Yeah, so um, we, we had the two bids. So the fiber optic line, the one bidder was A1 power. Um, excavating is not the right term. They are A1 power. Um, and then uh, this, the actual SCADA updates, the instrumentation, the programming, the software um, is PJ Cortons and company. Um, and then the PJ Cortons bid had two alter alternates. One was to replace all the existing PLCs, um, which is being recommended just so they're all of the new, newest vintage. And um, then the second one, um, we initially had flow meters being put into all the sewer lift stations. Uh, however, the pipe runs lengths really weren't gonna be there to, to meet the, um, the meter company's recommendations for how much straight pipe they need. Um, so instead of putting in flow meters that may or may not actually be accurate, um, we'd be looking at just changing the or adding a programming setting to calculate the volume. So we'd still be able to calculate flow based on uh, the water level in the wet wells there. Um, so we should still be able to get the same flow data just in a different way. And that reduces, that's a reduction of 124,900. Um, so the SCADA facility cost would be five ninety seven fifty. Um, so the total bid between the two is nine twenty five oh eight. Uh, like I tried to say earlier, our master plans had the uh, water side or the sanitary sewer side at two hundred fifty thousand and the water side at seven hundred twenty <coughs> for a total of nine seventy eight. So we are about fifty thousand, almost sixty thousand dollars less than uh, I guess those those original estimates. So who's in charge of the project? Is it A1 or? Uh... So, so, so A1 will be responsible for the fiber lines. Uh, PJ <coughs> so they're not, they're, they're both SCADA projects, but they're not um, relying on each other, I guess you want to say. So they're not going to be in each other? Correct, yeah. PJ Corn's going to get going on what they need to do with the existing radios. And then as the fiber line becomes available, they would just need to come back and change that communication. And hopefully for, I guess for well seven and eight, the goal would be that that fiber line is connected before anything even happens there with any radio. So we, we should actually see a deduct from the project coming because that was originally bid with a, a radio. So A1 project is $329,758. Correct, yep. The other company, five hundred dollars dollars Correct, yep. Okay. Your wishes. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Do you have experience with either one of them? A one does excavating work. Um, oh, yeah. Go ahead. We have work in the village, and we had some problem with them, but it worked out. Yeah. They've been in business for a long time. But a couple of years, they had a. A lot of other problems with their staff, and some people got killed in the pipe. <coughs> yeah. I went inside the pipe with the circular saw. Like a shoring problem where it caved in, or would it like? No, he went inside the pipe to cut the pipe with the circular oh saw. He just kicked back and cut yeah. his, his throat. Oh, Jesus. These were some of his difficulty and with the OSHA some difficulty. And but you guys haven't had any issues with them? No, I think that was what, 15. I, I guess I'm sorry, that's my question. Yeah. Is, is what you have for the yeah, no, vendors that you're recommending, if we, we've had any experience with them, or I know ACOM recommended off them. I don't know yeah. if they had recommendations with them. Yeah, and PJ Corns is who um, Schofield Rothschild, um, okay, yeah. I'm not sure a couple other people use. And truth be told, our, our guys, we're looking forward to having PJ Cortens have run our SCADA system um, or be, be the ones that program it because we have been using them for maintenance of our existing. Okay. Um, it's just. You guys feel pretty good about having them come in here. Though. Yeah, we've had a pretty good relationship and I know they, they're they in town frequently enough. Um, That's curious. Yeah. Sometimes you get people that have been on these things and you're like, who the hell? Yeah. 
Um, there's there's a couple other companies that if they would have bid on it, I would have gone. Yeah, um, okay. not not them. Oh, yeah, please God, no. <laughs> One of them did ask if we could extend the bid time um, <coughs> before bids were due, and we said sorry, no bids are yeah, due tomorrow. Gotcha. Um, so, okay, cool, great. Right. My only other question was, um, how is this project funded? Um, so the um, sewer utility pays for the sewer utility portion, the water utility. Um, we, we did some initial borrowing for the SCADA project um, for the design. Um, I know next month or in July, um, Jessica kind of wants to go over all the utility budgets. We um, Each, the water and sewer utility has a fairly healthy fund balance. Um, and to a certain extent, maybe more money than we should right now in savings, which is good. Um, since we have a lot of these larger expense projects. So some of that's going to be, um, how do we want to, you know, do we want to utilize some of our savings right now instead of borrowing so that we, you know, it's not necessarily a great, great care hit. You know, if we use our savings, it's not new money we have to borrow for. So um, but we're going to go over that with probably you guys in the finance committee um, and village board, just so we're all in agreement as far as how much money we should keep on hand versus what, we should use to kind of help uh, pay off some of these capital projects without just borrowing uh, more money. So you gotta have enough money in there for rainy day. Correct. Yeah. So unexpected project. Yeah. That sort of thing. So yeah. So uh, off the top of my head, I think we might have about three times as much as we actually need for a rainy day. Um, so yeah. <laughs> but again, you know, we got wells, we got skater, we got PFAS. So. Uh, it, it, it worked out well, um, I, I guess, to, that we, we have that. So we're not necessarily having to just also have a 20, 30, 40% rate increase on anything. So. All right, I'll accept the motion to these projects. Contract on A1 and uh, PJ Kirtan. Kirtan. Okay, Roy, Roy was gonna second for that. Did, did you make a move? He beat me to it. Okay. Did you make a move? <laughs> he, he made it. You did? I don't second. All right. <laughs> Discussion? Other question? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I have it. Thank you. Item 12, request for a street light at Bridge Street and Foxdale. Um, so we received a contact from a resident on Foxtail Court uh, over here, um, requesting that a street light be installed at uh, the intersection of Birch and Foxtail. Uh, there is a, there's existing street lights at um, Terrier Lane at the um, Colonial Gardens entrance at Jelnick, and then also at Community Center Drive, we have a lighted system for the pedestrian bridge. So we do have a stretch there that doesn't have anything. Um, and they just mentioned that a lot of people do utilize that stretch, um, you know, whether they're walking or biking and at night, um, you don't always see them or you sneak up on them pretty quick. So we thought at least having another light there, there's an existing power pole. Um, you know, it, it helps um, just to kind of illuminate that that way a little further. I'm sorry, street light, not like a traffic light. Yeah, street light. Yeah, okay. just a. Yep. No, I got you. A nighttime light. No, it's not traffic light. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, a street light. So we usually get, you know, a hand, you know, two or three of these requests yeah. a year. Um, we try to limit it based on the policy that's been adopted. Um, it does fit the criteria since it is on, you know, at an intersection. Is, it, is there been any talk about that road being on the on the kit plan at all? Because I mean, it, it is on the list. It is. I mean, it's degraded quite a bit, and yes. there's a lot of people always walking on that thing. You got that park on the other end with the bridge. Yep. And I know I mean, people are zipping up and down that thing all the time. Um, yeah. I just didn't know what if it was two or three years out or. Uh, it's probably have you done designs for it. We, we discussed that in December, didn't we? Like, yeah. So it's it's been in the CIP. It's probably more of like a. What, what year are we in 2023 now? It, it's probably about a four year out project. Um, we had funding for it at one point. 
several years ago, and then somehow the DOT didn't cut funding, but the project was no longer funded. Um, I, I, I still don't have a clear explanation on how that happened. Um, we also needed the money. Yeah, it, it, it was awarded funding through the MPO, and then all of a sudden there wasn't money. So, can we just, is it because of the requirements for an intersection and whatnot, just putting one street light there? But there, I mean, because you look past that, it does get pretty dark there, and there are people always walking up and down and thinking, right? And you've got, um, what is that road? Was? Well, Community Center Drive, that at least has sidewalks and it's very well lit going right up the backside of the campus there. Yeah. And I mean, we put the effort into put that bridge and everything down there at that kind of shady park. <laughs> um, I don't know. How dark, how dark is it between, I guess, that intersection and the community center? I, I guess my point is we need more than one light. Yeah, I guess I could reach out to WPS and see, you know, I think then we'd look at an alternating light or just see if there's another pole here somewhere. I don't, I, I mean, if we're going to put one in, I know it's dark down there and I'm yeah. walking down there all the time, you know. Um, so in the uh, ordinance, we have ordinance for, for these lights to meet that requirement. Does it meet the requirement of ordinance? Yeah, so I mean, right now we just say um, the Public Works Committee with approval by the Village Board may request the installation of street lights based on the following criteria. So A is a light at an intersection. And then um, I guess C would be one light every one tenth of a mile. Um, I, I know it says alternating sides. We haven't always followed alternating sides. If it, you know, if there's existing poles that we can put a light on sometimes, I guess. We just utilized that one tenth of a mile kind of as the, the so the request that you've gotten from the public is just for one light there. It's just right at that intersection because I think the person had a couple of <laughs> close calls to <coughs> turning even onto their own street and not realizing there's somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess past that, there's really what just one or two houses on the right. That's Correct. Yeah. I don't know. I just if it was probably better lit because I would think people go right up to community from there. <clears throat> we have to make a <coughs> so matters. We do that here. No, oh, just uh, internally. So just going back to, I I can't remember all the details, but I remember we discussed the the master plan for like the next few years. This project from community center to Jelinek was discussed as like like possibly a project that we could have even done this year. <coughs> But that would have been repaving it, yeah. Okay. So that wouldn't have added up. So I guess that, that's always the other question. We, we can repave it. Yeah. You know, and Dan mentioned we dig out the bad spots at least this year and okay. patch those in. But what you were talking about as far as the money was about a, 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 a multi-use path and okay. a full reconstruction. Mm -hmm. and, okay. <laughs> so okay. if even if a paving project comes within the next year or two or whatever that wouldn't have any impact on the lighting per se because no. that's okay yeah. yeah even if we do a full reconstruct that that light likely doesn't change okay and even if um the pole has to get relocated it, that ends up happening <laughs> at wp cost anyway okay i just wanted to make sure we're not going to rebuild a street next year and all this lights useless <laughs> yeah okay no. Is that light of the light on the bridge, pedestrian bridge, yep. still work? They do. I think there's one, a couple out. Scott was looking at that, talking. I know they were talking with a band nerd on trying to figure out if it was a bad circuit or what. Uh... That's the one as you walk in, it come up for you. There is a little bit cavity at the side on the carpet. Yeah. So they kind of a. Yeah, there's one there, and then I know one of the overhead lights was flashing. Yeah, it's doing like a strobe light test over there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're still trying to get the driver or figure out what's what's going on with that one. Sometimes just a bad note too. Yeah. yeah. And we, if you go by the hospital right now too, you'll notice that uh, part of Weston Avenue and Birch Street is out. Um, they're they're trying to figure out where that something short circuited that just you know it's kind of like Christmas lights. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere in there, one of the lights just went out and it took the whole strand out. Right. 
right? So, okay, what's your wishes? I move to recommend the village board approve the installation of a street light on the north side of the intersection of Bird Street and Foxtail Court. The second. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I have it. Thank you. I'm <coughs> oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Michael? When, um, each year, but, so each year we, we budget 2500 for street light installations. What's one cost? I use about 1200 I, I was getting a... Usually, twenty five hundred covers two lights. Two lights a year. Yeah, and then that's just replacing the entire light. What do we have for maintenance? That's putting a brand new light yeah. in. Right. Um, a, a, a street light itself costs us. It's like two fifty a month. Um, so we pay an annual fee of I mean, to WPS. To WPS. Yep. For the electricity. They do the maintenance, do the maintenance on it. Yep. Okay. So we just pay the thirty dollars a year essentially. Okay. What happened to those decorating lights at the intersection of the Bridge Street and Ross, um, Schofield Avenue, and Alderson and Schofield Avenue? I know we had so that on the list. I was going to put the light on those. But... Yeah, and then when he left, we gave the list to Van Ert um, for those lights and some other traffic light. I'll follow up with Roman on that. Okay. Well, we had that on their mm -hmm. do list. We actually have the lights. It was just Go, go install these for us. So I think it should at least put yeah. the light in. And... <clears throat> yeah. All right, thanks. Item 13, sur surplus auction item. Yeah, um, I guess as we're cleaning out the old building and moving into this one, um, um, quite a few um, kind of miscellaneous items that um, we didn't move over or we've moved over but aren't using um, anymore. Uh, and uh, staff just kind of identified these as surplus items. Um, and then we go and we sell them on, um, I guess, online on Wisconsin surplus. And yeah. Generally get more than we think things are actually worth yeah. um, for, for it. Surprised, yeah. yeah. Um, so then I know Roy contacted me over the weekend on uh, item 13. 13. All right. So. Speed me up where uh, we, we should probably check on this. Um, you know, we're not using it because our safety consultant pretty much told us. We have no rating on it. There's no. Yeah. Um, I, I just said, I said to him, given that we've publicly stated it's unsafe. Yeah. Do we want someone liability? Do I just said, if there's any liability issue, I think maybe we should scrap it and not yeah. sell it. But I don't know if you were able to talk to him. I didn't get a hold of him today, uh, but I we we can kind of keep that one on hold until we get a good answer on that. What was what does Scott surplus say? I mean, they don't. I, I was going to check with them too. I mean, a lot of the things say <laughs> you, you're selling yeah. it as is. You did disclose yeah. saying I you know we have no idea what the rating is on this. Right. And you go inspect it and decide for yourself. Yeah. 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 I, I just my thought was I just said if somebody got hurt on it and no, uh, you're, in the, you're in the public record saying it's unsafe. Yeah, well, <laughs> just pull that off there. It's up there. Pull it's that up. here. Just pull that off there. <laughs> safe due to yeah. being homemade. Yeah. Probably change it to unrated. Unrated. Yeah. yeah. I like Dan's yeah. idea. Yeah. Let's just go with unrated. Sure. <laughs> and, and that was really our, you know, we do a safety audit with our <laughs> consultant. Well, and then I thought back and I said we had, and plus we had a discussion. I don't remember which meeting it was, and that was the reason we were <laughs> the reason buying we a new one. one. Yeah, <laughs> and we weren't moving this one over. Yeah, yeah. So I said, now we're on record twice. There you go, Michael. We're, we're being transparent. We're letting people know. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll move to declare above property surplus and authorize staff to sell or dispose of these items as listed. Is there a second? We want to, I, I just going to reiterate again. Does that include item, lot 13 or? Uh, you can put con contingent on um, lot 13 um, being approved by village attorney. Um, I just change the language to unrate it. I mean, this is, I guess, technically a public packet liability. Or <laughs> That's yeah, or this exists. <laughs> yeah, this exists now out there for anyone who wants to look it up. So I, we, we can double check with the attorney as well as the auction site and just see what they 
You know? Okay, so I mean, even if we disclose it there, we say, hey, we're getting rid of this because we don't we deem it unsafe. Right. Um, buyer beware. Yeah. Um, I, I guess we can see what what if that covers us or not. So, so. I'll, I'll amend my motion to. Uh, um, go with the recommendations oh, from. You don't have to amend it because he didn't second that. Oh, just just oh, yeah. start over and update it. <laughs> yeah, just uh, make a new motion. Okay, so I, I will declare about property surplus authorized staff to sell dispose of these items as listed, with the exception of lot thirteen until further um, authorized by attorney. Authorized by authorized attorney. by attorney is made. I'll second. Discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, I have it, thank you. Yeah, item 14. Western Avenue and Alderson Street, Roundabout, color concrete. All right. Um, so as part of the Western Ave and uh, Alderson Street uh, reconstruction, uh, at the public information meeting, one of the residents in attendance had uh, asked if we we're going to do anything to um, advertise the school district since the high school is just down the road there. And um, I know Trustee Pinsnell was at that meeting and he also thought that would be a good idea. Um, so um, we've discussed a little bit with the um, school district uh, director of building and grounds, as well as uh, Tim Bergera, the Ministry of Public Works for Rothschild. And so in general, they'd be looking at where you know, a roundabout like this, instead of it being red, we'd have green concrete in the middle. And then the school district would um, utilize its students to, you know, put, put an E or the squiggle tree or some kind of um, school spirit um, decoration on top of the green concrete. Um, because I've checked with MSA, they don't see any issue with that being green instead of red. Um, the only thing is uh, it doesn't look like um, county materials cover col, uh, carries green as a standard color, so we'd have to see if uh, somebody green else of Everest. Yeah, just green because of Everest, and then if they put the tree logo or something on there, it can kind of pay you homage. Want it in, you want it to dyed in the concrete to retain the color. For it to be dyed in that way, you know, over time, if the plow hits it or yeah. you know things like that, it's not going to all of a sudden be green, and then with streaks of gray concrete underneath or something that has to be resealed all the time to keep the green color. Oh, I understand. Um, is there any safety implications? Yeah. So yeah. that's what we asked about. Standard. And, and um, the MSA said, no, there's no, um, you know, the DOT utilizes this kind of clayish red color as a standard, but there's nothing that says it can't be green. You know, we have green, you know, if, if this was grass, it, it would be green anyways. Um, so, uh, for at least three or four months a year. Yeah, for a couple months. <laughs> you know, and that's the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, so, so from that standpoint, there wasn't anything. Uh, I don't know from a policing. If you, I, I've done roundabout studies, and I, and when I saw this project, <clears throat> I did a ton of uh, Google search, and I mean everything under the sun exists in roundabouts, from yeah. trees to plants to shrubbery to science. Oh yeah. Um, uh, you know, I. I personally, from a public safety standpoint, don't see an issue with it. My concern is if um, I'm hesitant to approve this tonight, not knowing any potential costs that could come from it because we're not sure. So, so we would have red concrete in there. Um, and then, so if we're not, I guess my thought is if we can swap out green for red, it's probably cost neutral. Um, and, and that's the other thing. If there isn't a company that carries green as a standard, then we bring that back. You know, so I guess really what I'm looking for is this something we should continue to pursue? Um, and then once we have a, any kind of real cost comparison, we can double check, like before it's in the spec, you know, make it green concrete, we come back to you. But um, you know, if it comes back as, you know, there's no. Is Rothschild agree with this and they're going to cost share with us? Yeah, so I mean, Rothschild said, yeah, if we want to make it green, we can make it green. Yeah, as long as it doesn't cost more. So, so I guess that's really the main thing we're trying to figure out is would changing the color actually cost more? Or is it essentially the same? That's what alleviated my concern on the cost. Yeah, because I went, yeah. they're going to say, if it does cost more, they'll say <laughs> <Yeah>. no. <laughs> I guess 
from my perspective, like, do we just table this item and say that we have no issue with the possible color change, just bring it back with any potential cost, or there is no cost, and then we can approve? Yeah, we could approve it just based on no cost or motion to approve mm -hmm. based on no cost. Right. Yeah. No cost change to it. I don't, um, you did, so you did the, the traffic study for this, or you look no, at No, 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 no. I just mean, I've, I've studied roundabouts for work in other ways, and I just right. know that there's, no necessary concern about the color or what's placed in a roundabout okay. um, because it's more about the signage and, and stuff like that. But and this is uh, this happened before I, I got to the committee here, so I apologize, but I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Um, so this is part of the Weston West Nav Future Corridor like CIP project that this this roundabout is kind of part of it, or is it independent? Yeah, so it's part of the reconstruction of Weston Ave from Alderson to Birch. So it's a joint project with Rothschild. That intersection is actually three quarters Rothschild, one quarter Weston. Yeah, so, I know we're right on, right on the line there. Yeah, so I mean, really, Rothschild pay for three, is paying for three quarters of that intersection. Um, it's not split 50 50. Um, and they, they uh, well, I guess, why roundabout? Uh, just for traffic movement during school, in and out times or other events, that the existing four-way stop um, does get backed up. Um, so the other alternative that was looked at was, a light. A, well, not, not actually a light, a, a four-way stop, but with right turn lanes. Oh, yeah. um, but the right-of-way implications were essentially the same. Yeah. Um, and so this is a compact roundabout. So this middle, you can actually drive over. Uh, it's a mountable. It's not something that's actually a barrier. So you know, ambulances, fire trucks, school buses. Um, you know, they'd still make this turn if they might have bump up on it a little bit. Were they able to stay with the right away in the right away on all those personal properties there? Uh, so this isn't actually that intersection. This is a different no, intersection. Um, no, there there will be some right away that'll have to be purchased. Uh, and it's already been done. When's it scheduled to happen? It hasn't. The right away hasn't been purchased yet. Um, so this is all still preliminary so it's in, it's in design um rothschild i guess when we have that meeting it's in april i say late late march early april um, is when that meeting was and the rothschild village board um i guess reaffirmed yes well i know the dot is on a kick with these roundabouts but i sit at them sometimes and and for no apparent reason, you know, <laughs> just the three people ahead of me just waiting to get in there. Yeah, and I'm just thinking of traffic, school bus, everything, just like they're doing now, coming out of Everest and everything up that road, and people trying to get in there. Yeah, I just it's 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 a foreign concept to Americans. That's just been introduced in about the last five years, and most people still don't understand it. And now to put it in, in one of our busiest intersections, I just, I don't know. Yeah. it's um, decreased the number of accidents significantly. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. It may so, decrease the number of accidents, but it doesn't increase traffic flow. Well, it improved the traffic flow. No, it doesn't. Oh. Not from what I've seen. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying. I've, I've sat up plenty of these. Yes, things. sorry. The one up in Ross. You know, I mean, sitting up there sometimes, but I don't. I'm not saying it's not going to be improved. Yeah. I'm concerned just with the traffic coming out of there yet. I didn't know what stage we were at with it. So. Yeah. So I assume. With that layout, that's a preliminary design. So this is that going ahead with the purchasing right away. Yeah, so that'd be you gotta have some design to yeah. go for it for the right away. Yeah, so I, I I used I grabbed this. It's a Google image. This isn't of anything. Yeah, no, I, I have no idea where what state this is even in. I Googled roundabouts just to get something that showed the color to, yeah. for discussion. Okay. Um, okay. Well, yeah, the, the right away limits. If you go out there right now, there are slope stakes or right-of-way stakes out there showing what the limits would be. Um, so, so we know- it does have a preliminary design. There is a preliminary design and everything. Um, yeah. So the, uh, all the property owners know this is kind of coming or- Correct, yeah, they've been, and, you know- That's where the suggestion- Yeah, that, that, that's where that suggestion came from. Oh, I thought it came from the school. No, it came from a resident who was there and then we contacted the school saying, hey, would you have any oh, interest in this? Gotcha. And the school's like, well, yeah. I guess. <laughs> okay. If you want to do it, go for it, and you know they would, you know, be happy to have their logo out there. Oh, of course. Hey, okay. Michael. Thank you, Bruce. Anything else? I'll accept the motion on this. I'll move to recommend that uh, we seek further information on whether we can get the color green, and as long as there is no additional cost in regards to the project. Um, Is there a second? 
Okay. Any discussion? So Michael, you're gonna bring a cost to us if there is extra cost. Correct, yep. You know what? Just put it on the agenda, just discuss it, even if there is no cost. Yeah. Talk about it, say, yeah. But look at it, there's no cost, or here is the cost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we might not know that until we actually, I mean, this might be something that even is bid as an alternate in the spring when this project is bid. That's fine. So um, yeah. at least we like to know that number before we vote on it. Correct. Yeah. Before the project be awarded, that number would be known. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? I have it. Thank you. 15. Village of Western Stormwater Master Plan Review presentation. Michael. All right. I was thinking we'd have a lot more time here. <laughs> Got 14 minutes, but so, <laughs> I'll, I'll kind of give the Cliff Notes version and um, can maybe bring it back uh, at a future meeting here. Uh, so I guess when the Department of Natural Resources went through the, uh, the, the I, how to, I'll start at the EPA. So the EPA um, created uh, phosphorus reduction um, regulations, uh, which then the state of Wisconsin adopted and start going through the major watersheds in the state, um, targeting the most populated areas, um, which were um, down in the Madison, Milwaukee, and Fox Cities area. And then they came to the Wisconsin River Basin, um, I believe that was in 2019, 2018, um, came up with um, their baseline phosphorus loadings, uh, which then um, put it out to the municipalities saying you need to now reach a reduction of 68.6% of phosphorus um, from these baseline loadings. Um, they looked at current practices uh, and development, which um, we have many stormwater basins. We've got, we do our street sweeping, we do our leaf pickup. And um, the study essentially found that we're at 40, did I put it in here? All right. Put it there. We're at 47 point, uh, I had it there. We're not at 68.6%. Uh, uh, we're, we're at 48, uh, I don't want to say it's 48.8%, which is essentially where our TSS removal is. Our, our total suspended solids was the previous requirement. Um, and uh, at that, it was 20% TSS removal. The village of Weston was at uh, nearly 50% TSS removal. So we there wasn't a lot we had to do, and we were you know we're sailing along good. Uh, new development has to reach 80% TSS removal um, based on DNR code, and redevelopments have to be at 40%. Um, so one of my questions back to the DNR has been, what is the phosphorus requirements now for um, redevelopment since? Uh, 40% removal of TSS met the 20% requirement we had, but if now we're at uh, 68%, do we a lot? Do we require that the redevelopment sites be bigger? Um, and this comes into play too with our street reconstruction projects, because if we have ditches currently, um, we have to maintain that treatment, if not improve it. Um, so like. Luis's neighborhood over on Crestwood Acres, that, that, that still ditches over by West Elementary School, that was ditches. Uh, Birch Street was a hybrid, but we were able to use an existing storm pond there um, to achieve that reduction. So uh, this is really a main component of a lot of our, pro our projects moving forward is how do, we, how do we make sure we're not backsliding as the DNR puts it with any new development. So if we want to put in curb and gutter where we have ditches, we have to make sure we're treating that stormwater at least to the ditch level, if not improving it to an even better, um, you know, a swale or a ditch filters out um, the what are called pollutants from the stormwater. So as it's washing things off, it theoretically is capturing that in the grass before it's just entering the pipe and going directly into the Eau Claire River for the most part in our community. Um, so is that the enough that you just into a pond or some kind of a ditch and let it soak through? Essentially, yeah, you kind of just let it, um, you know, you, you, you count on, you know, groundwater infiltrating through and the, the soil just naturally filtering it out. So by the time it hits our aquifers, it's 
it's been filtered out and it's captured in all that soil above it. Um, you know, or it's, it's a great fertilizer. So hopefully it's staying in that um, top layer and keeping fertile soil um, there. So we, as part of the plan, we had to create a recommendation or kind of a, a plan of how we're going to achieve that, uh, you know, 68% removal. I right, use a table there. So this table, um, you know, I think we talked a little bit about the DOT storm pond. Um, at the end of the day, we need to get to an extra 634 pounds of um, uh, phosphorus removal. Um, so that storm pond uh, by business 51 highway 29 uh, is estimated to get us 122 um, of that. So that gets us a, a fair amount of, um, you know, that's about almost, a, that's over a 20, about a 20% uh, achievement there. Um, so out of 100% of what we need to get done, that, that pond alone is one fifth. If, if we are able to build that, that, that gets us a good, a good chunk of the way there. Um, and then there's a few other projects um, that they identified. One would be putting a pond, um, I got maps here. I'll just share those. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to jump around and get the highlights. <laughs> so this is the Business 51 pond. Um, on the screen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So this is the on-ramp for Highway 29. So if you're gonna to go to like Rim Mountain, um, the old Shopko is kind of over here. Now the VA, uh, Coral Lanes uh, right there. So this would be um, one big project right there um, that we try to coordinate as part of the Business 51 reconstruction. You know how many acres is there? Did he size it? Uh, 2.26 acres, it says. Oh. It says two, two and a quarter acres. One, okay. Yeah. Um, another project, uh, our future pond location. Um, so this is Camp Phillips Road. Uh, these buildings are the kind of the Bender properties. Uh, this is like the crack es escape room. So right, so just, just north of us here. Um, so we've got a 70. I believe this is a 72 inch uh, outfall. So this collects a lot of water from uh, Highway 29 heading north. Uh, you know, the Crestwood Acres area all eventually comes through this pipe. Um, I'm trying to think about Quick Trip and East. Um, so like Birch Street heading east, all that water, all that comes through here. So we'd be looking at putting a pond in, uh, kind of having this pipe daylight out and capture that water in a pond before it then enters the Eau Claire River uh, backwaters. That's a little over an acre on that pond. Um, here's another one at, uh, so Birch Street, Ross Avenue. Um, you know, these are just some identified potential projects. Um, you know, this is another, uh, it's only about a quarter acre pond. But again, I'm trying to find vacant lots currently or open areas where we could be, you know, a pond will, will be our cheapest. Uh, is there a walking trail? Where my, where my bobble and yeah, so part of that will be, you know, if there's wetlands present, you can't always put a pond in a wetland. Um, so there's some requirements there. Um, yeah, I mean, we have the trickle stream all the way down that uh, yeah. you can, you can Okay. You know, it's already it, wetlands, you can't do it. Yeah, um, okay. but as part of like, uh, you know, looking at Fuller Street, uh, if we do look at upgrading that to curb and gutter, um, getting that water to get piped down like Rogan somewhere over by Kellyland Park, I know that's one thing uh, we'll be looking at as far as could, could we put a, put a pond in there to um, help us out, not necessarily to take away from the park aspect, but if there's other land either, you know, kind of an odd shaped one along the, the far east east end, um, kind of where that basketball court area is, um, you know, kind of utilize the cell that uplands before it gets down into the floodplain. Um, so I'm sorry, Michael, the one that you were thinking of uh, just north of here, is that that's private land now? That, that is currently private land. So these would all be projects where we'd have to buy property. Um, yeah, I'm just right. curious. Yeah, so, well, with a 60 inch investor, where are you going to 
So we don't have a plan for that one because there's no real open land unless um, you got some neighbors that want to donate their properties. Right? Yeah, right. So, yeah. <laughs> you can use everything down the river. By the yeah. Does Fuller Street reconstruction give us any opportunities? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying is when we reconstruct Fuller, we could look at putting something down, you know, down towards Rogan or, you know, coming back through um, the other side of the dog park off of where, uh, I have like DNL signs, some of you know, one of those roads coming down that way. So there's other opportunities. These are just some of the big ones that Strand uh, identified as part of their study. Um, then this one is off of Callan. So again, we've got a, a larger pipe already um, that comes through here. So it's you know, so this is St. Agnes Church at Zinzer and Callan. Um, so just trying to find spots that um, you know we wouldn't be buying structures or having it incrementally, you know, imp implement these projects, you know, so this is looking at, I believe it's about a 20 year window. So that business 50 pond, business 51 pond is, is kind of a, is a big one as far as, you know, bang for our buck, you know, one project that'd get us, you know, what was that the way there. What? what was that now? The business 51 one, yeah. the DOT owns that. So that's one thing we're trying to negotiate. Buy that from them or how does that work? We're, we're hopefully not having to buy it from and hopefully also getting them to pay for part of it. I would say as part of their initiative for the stormwater project, yeah. they would just give it to us or, or whatever to yeah. be. They have their own stormwater to discharge too. Yeah. yeah. Well, they already discharged oh, their they, stormwater yeah. through our pipe. So yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and so those are all the conversations we've been having with the DOT to kind of get them to pay for it, um, or at least give us the land for free. Now you do a really good job with that, Michael, and your conversation with them, and, and when you're going after these grants and these initiatives and working with them, that's something that uh, I've always really been appreciative of. When you, you brought these in here, you do a really good job on your homework. So I guess due to time limitations, I, I can cut that short, but I can bring this back. But I just kind of want to highlight some of where we're at, why we do why we do that, and um, you know, last month we had the MS4 permit. And uh, this is kind of a, I guess, a partner to that permit is one of the things we have to do for our stormwater department. I'll be done. Any question for Michael? Speaker item, next meeting, Monday, June 12, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. That's a regular meeting. Monday, July 10, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. That's a regular meeting also. Topic for future meeting. Uh, I'd like to see you bring this report back and kind of uh, give us a synopsis in there. Yeah, because there, there's an element too where um, I was gonna talk about our stormwater utility rates. So to be able to afford some of these projects, we yeah. might have to look at uh, okay. changing that moving forward too, so yeah. Last time was just. Probably almost 10 years ago. So it was kind of time. Yeah. And that was a, like a 50 cent per quarter, like, you know, $4 or $2. If you, uh, if you brought something uh, to show an adjustment rating on that. Yes, sure. Yeah, the next yeah. Meeting too, please. yeah, yeah that, that, that's all. I, I, I cut that part out just because we got audience members for the next meeting. So. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, when you bring it back, as you said, bring all the costs in there also. Sure. Yep. And give us some more background on this. Yeah, we'll do. Okay. Did you mind including just a couple other communities in the area so we could compare? Yeah. So uh, not everybody has a stormwater utility, uh, but yeah, I, I, there, there's a every year the American Public Works Association publishes the current rates that are out there in the state of Wisconsin. So yeah. that'd be helpful. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Administrator is not here. Remote. He is online. I don't know if he has anything to oh, ask. Yeah. He, do you have any remark? I can make. I can make one remark. Are you? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Go ahead. Excellent. Okay. I'm sorry I can't be there tonight. I'm. My wife is in Florida, so I have nobody to watch my dog, and he got sick over the weekend. So I'm trying to just make sure he's not making too much of a mess at home. Anyway, um, we are having an open house for the new building on Saturday. Um, I had sent an email over the weekend for the 
benefit of the uh, trustees that, that we may have a meeting Wednesday for uh, kind of a preliminary walkthrough kind of thing. And I, after talking with Trustee Pinsonell today, we'd like to can, we'd like to do that. So we didn't get that sent out before the end of the day, but I'll do that tonight. So just to give uh, the trustees a heads up and also just to make the committee aware we have that open house on, on Saturday, starting at 10 for the, um, the, uh, the building uh, dedication, if you will, and ribbon cutting. So hopefully pe people can make it. That's it. All right, thank you. Shane, do we have a time on Wednesday? I'm sorry. Five. Wednesday. Five p.m. Thank you. Okay, item nineteen. Uh, remark from staff. Nothing for me. Oh, uh, I guess. One quick thing, um, yeah. the salt shed project is out for bid. Yeah, those, I was going to ask for that. Yeah, yeah where are we? Um, those bids are due on the 25th of this is month. Is that the one with the... So, so we got three options, uh, three fabric? three variations of the fabric building. Um, that'll be at our next meeting. That'll be at the next meeting, okay. yep. All right. Remark from committee member. Oops. Thank you. I don't have any announcement. I accept the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There's a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I have it. Thank you.